Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now we had also discussed at length about the idea of knowledge uh, in the context of Levi Strauss in his work The Savage Mind. Now uh, Rappaport also strongly advocated about the kind of ritual practices in the Sembega community uh, to what extent or why is that the pigs are being slaughtered and, and, and what, what this that symbolize and signifies to those communities. One thing is if you look at from the you know uh, ecosystem model for example, it in a way you know fulfill the uh, uh, demands of the or bridge the gap between the culture and the environment because uh, it in a way allows uh, the Sembaga community to you know uh, form a certain kind of sustainable uh, mode for you know bringing out or rearing the pigs. Now from an actor point of view it can be said that that particular practice is, is a sign of masculinity because uh, those who are able to rear a number of pigs are able to engage in that. Now from the works of Durkheim that is in his elementary form of religion or religious life he strongly talks about uh, the utmost importance of a society because the individual is just a subset of the society and the society in a way you know frames certain kinds of rules to be followed by the individual. Therefore, religion in a way is being created by the society and it is the individual which abide by the you know uh, or tends to conform within this. And uh, Durkheim also tries to depict the you know earliest form of uh, you know religious practice like totemism, animism so on and so forth. Now uh, in this ritual practices it is also interesting to see the interplay of this the uh, it, a form of uh, you know a theater like wherein you know uh, the performer in a way is to be uh, the idea behind this performing is to be encoded by those observer. It, 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 it is something sort of to be seen as a mode of communication between the two parties. Now, regional regulation and environmental uh, you know relations are pretty much embedded and uh, evident in the context of the ritual cycles of the Sembega community in New Guinea and uh, perhaps uh, you can you know refer the books of Roy Rappaport uh, that is the first one is ritual and religion the making of humanity and the second one is pigs for the ancestors. So, it will be evident enough to you know look at how uh, one makes sense of religion. Now, Subsequent to that, uh, we had also discussed uh, the three forms of religion, uh, and and then this this particular works are being uh, you know picked from a particular book uh, called Religion in an, uh, I mean under the theme of this religion in environmental crisis. Now the question is why is that uh, religion given uh, a central stage or importance in this environmental crisis? It is because it is through religion that one tends to be influenced and uh, with the kind of uh, teachings one engages with or the kind of scriptures one reads with it, 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 until certain kinds of uh, the way they behave and they share a relationship with nature is to be seen and inculcated. Now, we begin by looking at Lynn White's uh, work on the historical roots of our ecological crisis by tracing the history of how this ecological crisis has been looked at. Now, uh, he, he tries to you know juxtapose between the medieval period and then the Christian worldview and uh, during the medieval period there was nothing as such the 
uh, relationship between man and nature was pretty much you know cordial and uh, there, there's no much of you know a binary which exists uh, in terms of relationship with man and nature but as a result of this the i mean the intrusion of the judeo christian world view uh, man tends to you know of be guided by this anthropocentric ideas of uh, looking at nature that is men perceive themselves to be you know at the center of the uh, all the great 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 creations and then how uh, they are you know being at the middle and they have that kind of overriding powers again other creations now this sort of uh, you know anthropocentric ideas in a way is uh, responsible for because uh, it allows the humans to have a certain kind of you know overriding uh, power against other uh, species and also we had discussed the certain precepts uh, which come under the buddhist teaching uh, in terms of the bio biodiversity conservation i mean uh, eth ethics in buddhism now uh, in buddhism in the buddhist uh, teachings because uh, it, it has a different uh, ideas of how forests should be you know uh, conserved because forests are homes to you know the early uh, Buddhist uh, priest and uh, or the monks. Now therefore one one should you know like care and nurture the forest because they are home to the uh, human aspect and also uh, to show certain kinds of kindness and uh, you know caring towards the animals and plants and also it, it does not limit to plants and animals but also to, to, to the water bodies because water should be kept clean. So, there are different teachings which were discussed within the Buddhist uh, precepts and teachings and how Buddhism in a way is you know uh, to be seen in the context of the conservation of nature and even within uh, the Hinduism that is this which is influenced by the doctrine of this ahimsa or non-violence that the animals and plants should not be you know harmed. So, uh, perhaps we also looked at the idea of how uh, the nature is to be perceived and uh, we had also discussed the Bisnoi community which against was influenced by this idea of non-violence and then the Bisnoi communities are perhaps the first uh, you know uh, to sort of in the contemporary India that uh, they tends to succeed in conserving a forest. So, these are something which are again uh, guided by their strong commitment and uh, their perception towards nature in a way is uh, enabling them, them to you know conserve and preserve the nature. Now, uh, we have discussed three main uh, ethics within the uh, environment or the environmental ethics or the environmental philosophy and uh, some of the debates. Uh, which which hover around in a discussion was the idea of this uh, wilderness thinking or the kind of binaries which exist among the preservationists or biocentric against the imperial or utilitarian or anthropocentric. Now, this idea of this scientific industrialism in a way has uh, allow uh, the philosopher like Arninus to come up with a deep ecological thinking and to establish or bring out you know what could perhaps be the alternative in trying to address the environmental problems which we are in a way witnessing. Now, therefore, Arninus come up with this kind of a new form of philosophy called ecosophy or eco philosophy. Now, uh, in that what he says is uh, it, it the first and foremost is to have you know a critical or and uh, in depth awareness about uh, oneself or self realization is perhaps the starting point. Now, uh, only by understanding oneself 
then you can in a way address or relate yourself to uh, the environment. Now deep ecology again is uh, guided by this idea of biocentrism that is human is you know uh, part of the uh, ecosystem that is human is not seen as you know above nature, but they are just part and parcel of the you know uh, the ecosystem. Therefore, it is against uh, this idea of shallow ecology. Now, for example, uh, the idea of this, for example, pollution. Uh, in in shallow ecology, pollution is seen as you know, uh, which which in a way is harmful to the health and so and so problems for human. These are more or less analytics or the uh, northern idea of or the western notion of understanding pollution, but pollution again uh, should be addressed and understood uh, by not just addressing the problems, but perhaps what are the causes of this pollution. So, one needs to you know restructure and try to reconfigure by trying to look at what uh, this idea of uh, this understanding of I mean the ecology is. Now, uh, we had also talk about how Nas was influenced by this Gandhian ethics of uh, uh, Ahimsa and uh, the, the kind of uh, how humans I mean should be dependent and uh, on the uh, available resources. Now, Nas in a way has also talked about uh, the catchy you know jargon I mean the term I mean phrase which he come across uh, I mean the, in his the interview that simple in and simple in means and rich in ends also to, to some extent uh, talks about what Gandhi in a way always strongly talk about uh, for instance uh, the world has uh, enough resources to meet the needs of human but not the grids of uh, but, but not their grids. So, in a way people should be increasingly engaged in trying to fulfill their basic needs rather than trying to accumulate and exploit the resources in order to you know accumulate or this idea of market or capitalism should be sent. Now, he has in a way strongly talk about the you know uh, exploring about the simplicity of life. Now, uh, social ecology again uh, is uh, addressing about the ecological problems and uh, in, in this Murray Bookchin again tries to locate the human nature, because human in a way is uh, perhaps uh, responsible for this uh, the environmental changes uh, which which in a way is produced by man. Now, this domination of nature also should be seen in the context of the you know the idea of dominating nature which in a way emerges as a result of the social structure or the society which we are in. Now, he also talk about the male the idea of male domination, this idea of this mas masculinity that is how uh, you know uh, women are seen perceived to be you know uh, a weaker sex and then they need to be you know protect or they need to be tame. So, this sort of perception which develop in society in a way also has a far reaching impact on the way we perceive nature that is how the dom domination of nature emerges. Now, uh, what uh, Bookchin also talks about in the capitalist industrial capitalist class was the grow or die that is uh, a deep thought kind of competition that is if one has to you know at all survive. So, which means they need to you know progress and move on. So, in a way those who do not progress should perish and, and they, they do not have really a say or a place in this uh, the market oriented kind of society. Now, uh, by saying so, uh, he, he tends to perceive 
this idea of colonialism so and so forth as something which is also responsible for the environmental crisis and uh, books in in a way develop this social ecology uh, not just as you know to unearth the problems but also it is a universal appeal not only for a moral gen regeneration but also for a uh, certain kind of social reconstruction among uh, along, I mean along the ecological lines. Now, uh, similar to what we had discussed in social ecology uh, that is this idea of domination of nature in ecological feminist philosophy, we also look at the kind of connection which shares between feminism and environment that is the structure of domination the which are being shared to the e empirical and exp experiential ideas by different uh, scholars and how this religion in a way you know can perhaps uh, bring an answer to this uh, idea of problem that is by resacralization of nature. Now, uh, na I mean human and nature are also or the relationship with or the idea of domination of nature is also different in the western context and in the Indian context. And uh, we had also discussed at length about the Chipko environment conservation movement, which perhaps was the first eco feminist movement in India. Now, uh, we had at length discussed how this idea of uh, you know uh, the male centric ideas are in a way responsible for these problems, and eco, e eco feminist or the ecological feminist philosophy is guided by this. Uh, to come out of this crux of this uh, the patriarchal mindset. Now, indigenous knowledge and traditional ecological knowledge tries to separate two different uh, worldview that is of the the bricolier and the scientists based on the works of Levi Strauss that is the idea of uh, concrete and science. Uh, we we tend to look at what how this uh, how uh, uh, perceiving I mean the possession of this bricolier is nothing but you know a differing attitudes or a different thought of uh, you know possessing knowledge that is they are able to use the available resources. A bricolier is you know often perceived to be a handyman that is which you know utilize the tools at hand and uh, uh, it, it, it should not be you know perceived in such a way that uh, those who have that kind of knowledge should be seen as savage or uncivilized, but rather it, it happens to be at a different point of time or a different you know world together and then in which they have their own ways of making sense of uh, you know or possession of knowledge and which is being utilized in a different perspective. And we had also discussed about the idea of life projects which is embedded in the social memory and history and how these knowledge are being you know embedded in the kind of uh, the land forest and the environment and, and in this context it is important to locate uh, the discourse of this uh, development in relationship with the uh, indigenous people. Therefore, uh, this kind of relationship which is shared by the indigenous people is not just about the means of economic uh, or practices, but it also entails to the idea of you know uh, cultural identity or how their identity is being uh, you know established. Therefore, indigenous knowledge has to be looked at in that local context or local premises. Now, in traditional knowledge and natural resource management, we had looked at the work of P. S. Ramakrishnan in his seminal work on one and two worlds and ecological journey, wherein uh, one has the traditional wisdom and one is guided by the formal knowledge that, uh, that is of the scientists. Now, the ecological journey is nothing but an evolving eco philosophy that is between the traditional knowledge and formal knowledge. How two different you know uh, viewpoints or two different sets of worldview is being framed 
and within that it is important to look at the interconnectivity between the ecology and the social system how uh, these agriculture practices are not simply economic but also it is uh, a socio-cultural and uh, a way of life by by those who are practicing it because it has a strong animist belief system which are inter interwoven into it and so is their idea of this conservation of forests which are being based on the traditional farming system. Now, in this it is important to see that how this traditional farming system are in a way you know uh, able to uh, bring in this idea of agroforestry which uh, Ramakrishnan has strong, strongly pointed out and then in which he sees that uh, uh, in fact these communities are the ones who have conserved the nature in a way in a much more better way. Now, we had also delved upon the debates on shifting cultivation and uh, with the questions such as is it a form of sustainable natural resource management. Uh, we had also discusses this meanings and methods which are involved in shifting cultivation and the various debates beginning from the colonial period and trying to look at how the present forest policies are still being influenced by these uh, the colonialist perception towards nature and, and how their idea of uh, I mean uh, are being guided by this instrumental if not utilitarian perspective of looking at or addressing the issues or problems of zooming, which, which in a way is seen to be you know uh, responsible for deforestation or if not the environmental problems. Now, therefore, there are differing viewpoints and even within social sciences like the economists and others have a different viewpoint whereas, the anthropologists and the socialists has different viewpoints wherein they inject the socio-cultural practices which are pretty much embedded in this uh, idea of uh, zooming practices. Therefore, one needs to you know come out of this misconception and tries to look at the feasibility of shifting cultivation, because the imposition of changes uh, or finding an alternative way by simply uprooting or by simply moving from you know like a zooming to the uh, terrace or wet rice cultivation perhaps seems to be you know not really a viable option or not you know sustainable in the long term or it is not really uh, you know an answer to this. Therefore, one needs to reframe this idea of misconception. Now, uh, finally, we had uh, also talk about the kind of ecological knowledge, the idea of subsistence and livelihood practices in the context of the the indigenous Kuki peoples, which 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 are largely you know concentrated in North Northeast India, and then uh, my study uh, looks at how the social history of this particular people in terms of their relationship with land and then uh, the kind of farming practices they have involved, the kind of worldview they have, the kind of rituals and ceremonies which they practices in terms of you know establishing certain kind of uh, connections and their relationship with their environment and their connections to their land and forest by the practices of rituals uh, which are usually performed in uh, agriculture practices like zooming. Now, the question is uh, how these people uh, before the advent or before the shift of their religion that is to Christianity. I mean, the, the way back in the late uh, 19th century and early 20th century, their perception towards nature and then their connections to their land and forest or environment has taken a dramatic shift. But my idea or my study over here is based on the pre-Christian uh, beliefs and their practices. Therefore, one can in a way establish that. Uh, they were in a way at certain point of time were engaged in you know a sustainable mode of you know subsistence or maybe or sustainable in terms of the environmental issue. Now, therefore, we have discussed at length beginning from 
you know the various concepts and meanings of nature culture the debates around the kind of you know contradictions which and uh, also how religion in a way plays an important uh, role in the life of human communities and also the kind of environmental philosophies uh, which are developed by a certain kind of uh, scholars and also looking at the historicity of shifting cultivation and uh, looking at the context of the indigenous Kuki people. We are in able to you know in a way uh, address or looked at the kind of uh, the various strengths, uh, the challenges, the problems uh, which are being you know addressed in the course ecology and society. I have just uh, given a brief summary of the course on ecology and society and uh, we have uh, roughly touched upon uh, different uh, ni around 19 themes uh, within this and uh, I am sure I am able to you know like uh, briefly uh, summarize uh, each and every content. Uh, I might not be um, very in depth uh, to that extent, but for us to have a glimpse of what we have uh, you know discusses in this uh, lecture series. And uh, with this we come to the end of this course and I am hopeful that you will have a much more uh, wider understanding about the ecology and uh, society its challenges, the problems and the kind of uh, ideas which are or theories or approaches which are embedded within it. By saying so, I am not saying that uh, this one particular approach might be sufficient for this course, but uh, it is just only one part and primarily from the ecological, anthropological point of view and sociological point of view. Thank you.